Okay, so for today's video, uh, what we're going to do is take this 12 by 12, a little, little bigger than 12 by 12, uh, piece of naval bronze, naval brass, I think is what it's called technically, uh, and turn it into a plaque, actually. Uh, another plaque and uh, we've done this before and uh, I think I can put a link to the to that video in the corner uh, but uh, this one's uh, instead of being out of aluminum this one's gonna be out of brass uh, kind of a high-profile project um, a guy named uh, Wally Shibashi uh, passed away a little while ago and we're doing a dedication of a greenhouse up on the mountain uh, in, in his honor uh, so, <clears throat> let's go ahead and, uh, and get this project underway. Okay, the 12 inch piece, uh, we gotta take two inches off. So, Okay, so this uh, with the writing, this is going to be the back side. So we got to get all the burrs off of here. Any damage from shipping or from cutting? Get this thing to get this thing to lay flat consistently. Okay, here you can see a uh, like a sacrificial plate back, back here. This half inch thick piece of uh, cast plate. Uh, it's the exact same size as the plaque. And what I'm going to do is mount that in the vise and surface it off so it's flat. And then uh, uh, bolt the plaque to this. And then I can do all the work to the plaque. Uh, cutting the perimeter of it to size as well as doing all the surfacing work, exposing the letters and all that stuff. So this gives you an idea of uh, just grabbed a, a block, big old massive block of aluminum and clamped it to this guy. That's kind of how I support things that are kind of tall, keep them from rattling so I can uh, square things off. I'll do this edge, come back across, uh, finish that up, then I'll flip the whole mess and uh, do the other side. And we'll have two flat surfaces that will grab nicely in the vise then and uh, hopefully prevent any sort of uh, chatter. All right, I got uh, got the vise mounted, squared up, both the backstop, the back jaw, and uh, and uh, the face of the thing. Everything is checked. Uh, this is the plate that we squared up, uh, cast aluminum. Uh, I also uh, uh, clamped that down, and I indicated across that in both directions. It's quite flat, really nice, uh, good enough for what we're trying to do here. Um, next thing, uh, clamp the material down to it. Uh, of course, I indicated and I gave uh, I gave a couple of uh, right there. You can see a couple of machine surfaces. So if I need to come back, I can actually uh, pick up an edge and refine my zero of this entire setup. Um, so I guess what we're going to do now is work at uh, doing some cuts up top uh, to relieve some of that material and see how this all cuts with the first tool, which is uh, four flute uh, corner radius. Uh, half inch, half inch, and that's a helical end mill. 
Okay, we're done with the first uh, kind of, call it roughing cut. And uh, yeah, surface finish is impeccable. That end mill is, uh, is a nice piece. So this, uh, this profile is actually the shape of Mauna Kea, taken from a picture. Very small, the telescopes are right up there. So uh, this was as good as I could get with a half inch. And now I'm gonna have to come in probably with something really tiny and finish up all the detail on the ridge here. And then we'll go ahead and punch holes, bolt this thing down and do the perimeter. We got uh, holes drilled through, uh, countersunk, and tapped into the, the base plate. Uh, bolted down with some big flat heads, they're five millimeters in this case. And then what we're going to do is uh, let's go ahead and surface the outside edge, do a little contour around the outside edge, bring this to finished size. Finish of the cleanup pass, little 5,000 spring pass. And you can see there's chips. I left a bunch of aluminum chips in the machine to kind of catch all the super fine brass, bronze. And we'll just vacuum all this out when we're done. So we don't risk contaminating our uh, our coolant. It's not as bad as copper, but it's bad. Anyway, pretty nice surface finish. Okay, now what we're going to do is use that same half inch to come in and just uh, rough out all the big open spots in here. It's going to leave lines where the letters are, and uh, and it should come in and leave like a little ring around here and the profile of the mountain it will cut the bottom edge of the mountain as well so let's rough this guy out it's just a simple 2d high speed tool path 160,000 step overs Okay, that's how we sit roughed in with a half inch. And now what we're gonna do is go in and do some rest machining with this guy right here. And that's a three flute, uh, what do we got here? That's a three flute Goering uh, 3.175, so that's one eighth of an inch. Anyway, uh, with rest machining, it's just going to go in and tighten up all the areas where the half inch didn't go. So, very efficient machining strategy. So I've got this guy set up so it never takes more than about 30 thou of radial engagement. Style micro lifts on the back feet. Okay, so, uh Thought I'd show you uh, what the tool pathing looks like on this deal. Uh, I've actually got the 1 8 cutting out there right now, but let's go back and show you what this looks like. 
uh, anybody that's not seen what rest machining is. So here you can see uh, the blue lines. That is all of what the uh, what the what the uh, half inch end mill went in and did. Everywhere it was able to go, I think I left maybe ten thou of clearance on the side uh, for cleanup uh, and to keep that guy away so it could go very very fast. Uh, now when I turn on number eight here that's going to show you everywhere that the one eighth went to uh, to do more cleanup and then and then here you can see uh, this is the verify option in MasterCam so I can actually go in and there is what the half inch does very fast speed Pretty cool. We'll slow this guy down. Now, here's what the little one eighth does. It just works on what was left. Machine the rest. Okay, so we've run the one eight. So this says native Hawaiian leader and steward of Monica. Well, that's what the 1 8 did. And now we're going to do some more rest machining. Uh, so the rest from the 1 8 to this little guy right here. Boom. So 1 16th, little uh, four flute 1 16th. So we'll see what that guy can do. 7,500 RPMs, and uh, I don't know, it's probably gonna run for an hour. So I think the final tool that we're gonna use is gonna be this uh, Harvey 60 degree uh, little engraver and uh, we'll use it to just kind of define the edges of all the letters. All right, so there you can see the 60 degree cutter. It's a little bit of a flat on the tip, just a tiny bit of flat.
And there you can see why a microscope is kind of necessary. <laughs> Corners are knocked off this guy. Okay, so we saw what that little end mill looks like. And you know, I've, I've got one of these guys that I use sometimes to look at stuff. Helps me figure out what, what a tap is, you know, specifically, or, uh, you know, my eyes are getting old, but uh, some of this stuff's pretty small. Um, anyways, this loop is not nearly good enough to see the condition of, of a tiny end mill like this, one, one thirty second. Um, and they get smaller, way smaller. Uh, so uh, we're waiting uh, on a shipment of those to come in. We should see them on Friday. So I think we'll go ahead and close this video out and finish the plaque uh, uh, next time and uh, move on to the next project, which is going to be uh, steel and it's going to be cutting the brake uh, caliper adapters out of steel. Uh, I'm going to do some, some high feed milling, uh, throwing big chips. So anyways, uh, stay tuned and uh, I hope, hope the content was good. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks. Bye.